Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about UDS, which stands for United Disability Services. 51 years making a difference in our community. We'd like to say welcome, first of all, to Bill Kepner, President and CEO. Hi, Diane. Larry Aubrey. Director of Development, thank Hi, you for yet. being here. It's good to see you both Thanks again. Thanks for having you so much. For those who don't really understand the impact and what you do, let's explain some of that, Bill. We provide 13 different types of programs and services for folks with disabilities and seniors with lesser abilities and uh, also veterans uh, to remain in their homes, to live as independently as possible. We like to say we enhance ab uh, abilities, enrich lives. And we do all we can to help them live as independently as possible in the community with those services. That's wonderful. When we say with disabilities, what are we talking about? Well, we can, we're talking about physical disabilities, things that people know like cerebral palsy, like MS, and we're also talking intellectual disabilities uh, as well. So it, it covers the whole gamut. Okay. So there's been a lot going on with state budget, and that also affects what you can do or can't do. Address that. It really does. Uh, as much as uh, we like to diversify and expand, 83 percent of what we do is still government funded. A lot of what we do is through the state waiver program which is paid for by the Medicaid, uh, Pennsylvania Medicaid program. And so this year's budget impasse really uh, dealt us a serious blow as far as uh, reimbursement and cash and has really challenged us this year. And so that's where events like what's coming up and we're going to be talking about on uh, May 13th, yes. fundraising really makes a difference. It's really important, right, Larry? Oh, it does. It makes a tremendous difference. Not only that, we also feel like these events help to spread the word about UDS because quite often people tell us that we're one of the best kept secrets in Lancaster County and they don't realize that we serve over 3,500 individuals with disabilities every day. And that's every day, you're saying? Every day, yeah. Every day. Yes. Specifically, what are some of those services? Well, one of the most important services is what's called service coordination. Uh, participants in the home have a service coordinator that is like a case manager, someone that, that uh, makes sure they get the services they need and actually visits them on a regular basis to make sure those services are working and really taking care of people, keeping them safe, keeping them healthy, uh, keeping them thriving. Uh, in addition to that, we do personal uh, assistive services, which is personal care. I mean, you know, many of our people can't get out of bed. Mm. They can't take a shower. They can't feed themselves. They can't get dressed. And so we have, we have uh, over 300 personal care attendants that go into homes to help people get ready for their day, mm -hmm. maybe get them to a job or whatever the next steps are. But we make sure people get the personal care they need, you know, things we take for granted that we can do. To have quality of life. Isn't that what it comes down to in the support that you can then give? That's exactly what it comes down to. So that's why we have 13 programs and services because there's a, a lot of different things that can make a difference for people. For instance, uh, we have employment services. Mm. You know, people with disabilities want to work. They want to be an active, contributing part of, of the community. And so that's a way we try to help get people placed in jobs. Uh, um, so things like that can really make a positive difference because people want the best quality of life possible and they deserve that. That's right. How does someone go about taking advantage of the services that you have to offer? Well, one of the things they can do is uh, if they, they need answers. Mm -hmm. For instance, maybe a loved one becomes dis disabled suddenly through a stroke or whatever the, uh, the circumstance may be. Uh, they can call our resource center and it's a 1-800 number that people can call into and that starts the process of us identifying what they might need and how we might be able to help them maybe with one of our services or connecting them to the community with a strategic alliance you know we don't do everything but we have a lot of good partners that we can connect them to to make sure they get what they need Otherwise, as I said, 83% of what we do is government funded. So then it goes through the state wa waiver program. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, it's a more complicated process, but if they qualify for waivers uh, through, through their physical and financial uh, uh, means, uh, then they come into our system. And it is about the collaborations that you're doing, isn't it? And the fact that, you know, you're serving, what, 10,000 families? Is that what oh, we were talking uh, about? Yes. We At believe least. through our resource center we're getting 1,000 calls a month. So, you know, if we do the math there, we're doing at least 10 to 12,000 families. We're touching 
uh, just through that. The resource center is that hub, isn't it? It, it is. is. It's a centralized location that we first decided to put in place because it would be a great way, we thought, to find out what are the service gaps in the community? What are the things that people really need that maybe we're not providing? Or what are the things we really need to invest in to improve mm -hmm. what we are providing or what the needs are? And so that started the whole process of, of developing a real database and then starting strategic alliances. And it also led us to, once they call and we find out sort of what their needs are, we actually send a case manager in the home. There's no charge for any of that. Mm -hmm. We fund this ourselves to go in and, you know, assess the <coughs> needs, and give them hope, help them yeah. to know that, you know, there's answers out here. You're going to be fine. We're going to help you with your loved one, and things are going to move forward. Yeah. This has really expanded over the years, hasn't it, Larry? Oh, it has. Yeah, we started out with, you know, uh, UDS started back in 1965. There was one little girl who wanted to go see the movie Mary Poppins. And from that, now we, um, you know, serve over 3,500 people with these different programs and services. You know, in addition to what Bill mentioned, we have a custom wheelchair seating unit mm -hmm. that provides uh, tailored seating for individuals with fairly severe disabilities. And we have an adult enrichment program, which is a day program for adults with disabilities. And of course, everybody knows our service dog program, yes. which is in the community now. And uh, we've started a, a puppies in prison unit there oh, with wow. them where prisoners are helping us train the puppies now. And it's been very successful. Mm, that's really, really wonderful. What else do you want us to know about Well, UDS? a couple other things that uh, people might be surprised to know is we have our own home medical equipment company. So, okay. so people who have basic needs like a hospital bed or walkers or wheelchairs, things like that, we can serve. But we also do highly complex rehab kinds of things like power wheelchairs and and things that can help people uh, stand from a seating position and, and assistive technology and all those kinds of things too. So we go from basic to pretty much high tech and complex, mm -hmm. but that's something that we have as well, which is unique to an organization like ours. Yeah, and you do, you keep changing and evolving as you get requests and see needs in the community. That's correct, right Bill? Well, you're absolutely right. The HME grew out of our service coordinators coming to me and saying, uh, Bill, we have a lot of folks in power wheelchairs that uh, folks sold them the chair, but nobody wants to repair them. Mm. And it's their legs. It's the only way they can be mobile and get around. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, we've got to solve that. So actually I bought a mom and pop HME company so we could make sure we serve that need. And now I've expanded into something much bigger and we think better. What do we possibly not know about UDS that you would like us to know? Well, one of the things that, that uh, despite the challenges from the state that we've really started to invest in is a company no called Nonprofit Management Solutions. It's one of those things, NPMS, we like to say. And it's a company we devised to help other nonprofits, in many cases, small nonprofits that have one or two people doing everything. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of those out there. We know there's 20,000 nonprofits in the state of Pennsylvania, and probably 10,000 of them are very small, but they, but they do important niches in the mm -hmm. community. And so we have this business to help support them and uh, provide consulting and management services to them, but at a much uh, reduced rate, under $100 an hour. And so if anybody's out there who, who gets consulting work mm -hmm. under 100 an hour is a wow. pretty darn good rate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So right. our goal really is to uh, mm -hmm. help sustain them, help yes. educate them, maybe mentor them, mm -hmm. and help them to get things in place that maybe can help them yeah. on ongoing in the long term. Yeah. Let's put a real face on this, mm -hmm. because I know you probably have hundreds of stories, but what you're doing is changing lives and making such a difference. Is there a story that you could share? Well, you know, this sounds, this sounds very simple, but it's very profound and impactful and uh, I think a very meaningful way. We got a letter recently from a mother who had a young son who uh, had cerebral palsy from birth mm. and she had to lift him in and out of his wheelchair every day, lift him in and out of the bathtub. And as he was aging, he was getting heavier uh, and he was wanting his privacy, you know, you don't want to have your mom in the bathroom with you. So our home uh, modifications division came out and did um, a renovation in their bathroom. Mm. And she said the first day that he used that, she sat down and cried because she didn't realize it was the first time in his life that he was able to take a shower privately by himself. Mm. And she said it's something simple like that, you know, that you just kind of take for granted, but you don't realize, you know, the dignity involved with, um, you know, sometimes having a disability 
you know, you have so many folks assisting you with things. But to have that type of privacy and dignity associated with it is, I think it's, it makes me feel good about what we do, that we can help somebody uh, with something as simple as that. Yeah makes all the difference in the world. It's those lifestyle, those life issues that you deal with on a day in, day out basis. Absolutely. Making sure that there's the support that it's needed. We're gonna put the website up on the screen. You can find out everything mm -hmm. about United Disabilities Services, services provided and how we can help and be involved. And how we can help is this wonderful event that's coming up. So we're gonna take a brief pause and we come back. We're gonna tell you about it. You don't wanna miss that. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about UDS, United Disabilities Services, and their big gala coming up on Friday, May 13th. This year it's at the Fireside Tavern in Strasburg and it's Expanding Horizons 2016, celebrating the creative spirit. This is excellent. Larry, tell us about this. Well, we were thinking when our committee got together this year, thinking about what we wanted to do. Uh, one of the things that we do every year at our gala is we always have our consumers, folks that we help, we have them as part of our program. I think it's really important for people to understand, um, you know, how their contributions are helping people live independently every year. And one of the things we, when we were getting together brainstorming this year, we realized we have a lot of very talented, creative people that receive services from us. So we decided to celebrate the creativity of some of these extremely artistic individuals this year. So that's the theme of our program. And we have several individuals on the program who are going to be sharing their gifts and talents with us. Oh, that's so exciting. Let's talk about some of those people. Michelle White. Now, Michelle White is a wonderful, wonderful woman. She is an elementary school teacher. And about 16 years ago, she was injured and has a spinal cord injury. Mm -hmm. She is pretty much not able to move her body from the neck down. She has limited mobility with her, with her hands. but. Um, her injury was such that she had to stop teaching for a few years. She gradually got back and started tutoring. Then she, as, as her uh, recovery progressed, she was able to uh, get to the point where she could get out in the community every mm -hmm. day. So she went back to teaching school full time. So she teaches fourth grade now in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And when she started going back, her kids started asking her about her accident. Mm -hmm. And so she was trying to find a fun way to engage them and tell them about it. So she wrote a children's book about her accident with this character named Spiny the Porcupine. And it told all about her accident. And she engaged artists to help her with drawings and such. And she has now written three children's books. Oh, wow. And so, she said, I yes. never would have gone down this path if it hadn't been for my accident. So she goes out to schools mm -hmm. and to public events and talks about her disability and basically tells children, you know, people with disabilities aren't any different than you. So we're going to be auctioning off a basket of her books that she's going to uh, autograph. And I think she's got a couple of uh, goodies in there for us as well, too. And she's going to speak a little bit on the oh, program good. as well, oh, too. That's excellent. Well, I'm excited about the painters you're going to have there, too. I believe it's three of them. Yeah, Is we have correct? three. Now, these artists are just incredible. And um, I think we're going to be having some photos that are going to come up. I'm going to tell you first about this young man named Mike Allgaier. Mm -hmm. Mike was... Uh, he, at the age of nine months, he had a brain bleed, and since that time, he's had cerebral palsy. He is immobile from his neck down. And what's interesting about Mike is his parents never treated him any differently from his other brothers and sisters, and he said his family always expected the same results from him as the other folks in his mm -hmm. family. And because of this, he was very, very uh, creative and also very intelligent. He ended up going to the Rochester Institute of Technology and majored in computer sciences. He was recruited by Martin Lockheed, and he's been working with them for about uh, 10 years now. He works a 40-hour week job as a computer programmer, software engineer. Mm -hmm. He works three days a week on site, and he works from his home. Now, the thing about Mike, Mike is, again, paralyzed from the neck down, immobile. He has an attendant that comes into his home and gets him ready, takes him to work, comes back, but he lives alone, mm -hmm. he lives by himself. Totally Mike dependent. cannot move Amazing. any part of his body except his head. He has this cap that he has this extension that goes down that he works on his computer with, but he's also a painter. And so we commissioned a painting for him that we're going to be auctioning off uh, at the gala. And it's just phenomenal. He, wow. He's an incredible painter, an incredible individual, really, really cool guy. So 
looking forward to seeing him there. That's amazing. Susan, is it Bingaman? Susan Bingaman, yes. She uh, came through UDS as, uh, um, she has one of our service dogs. And um, Susan was born with cerebral palsy. She's been in a wheelchair all her lives. And, and she does not have mobility in her hands at all. But she's created a, um, she fastens this attachment onto her wrist and she has painted for us. We commissioned a painting from her of her service dog that she's going to paint for us. And she's go we're going to be auctioning that off at the gala as well. And Susan is just phenomenal, really amazing, amazing woman, very, very spirited and very, very talented. Jonathan Whitlock. Jonathan Whitlock is a renowned local artist here in the Lancaster mm -hmm. community. He's had several uh, gallery showings. Uh, Jonathan is uh, donating a painting, an original oil painting. Uh, for us, but Jonathan had a car accident when he was nine years old, or 19 years old, and um, had a um, traumatic brain injury. What's interesting about Jonathan, before his injury, he painted with his left hand. His left hand became paralyzed during his injury, and now he paints with his right hand. Wow. And one of his showings that he did recently, he had his artwork before his accident, mm -hmm and his artwork after his accident. Mm. And he feels, he's told us that he really feels like his art has expanded and increased since his accident. And uh, he really feels like in many ways he was blessed. Well, his, his paintings uh, in his early days were very dark. Mm. And it's interesting how much different the tone and, and uh, of these paintings are now. Yes. Wow. We also have Jeremy Harvey. He's a pianist and a composer. Yeah, now Jeremy is a really special young man. Um, he was born in China. Uh, his parents were, uh, his dad worked for the State Department uh, in Beijing. And um, he was put in an orphanage when, uh, after he was born because he had cerebral palsy. And he is pretty much blind. He has about 99% sight loss mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So his parents brought him back to the United States, and when they uh, brought him here, he always were, was going up to their piano trying to play it. And they took him to a doctor, and the doctor told them, don't let him do that because he'll just be disappointed. His mm -hmm. cerebral palsy is progressive. He'll never be able to play the piano. Well, his parents didn't listen to that doctor. And Kevin's. <laughs> yes, that's right. And Jeremy now is a very, very gifted and uh, uh, talented classical composer. He arranges his own music and he has his own website. He sells CDs and uh, he's just an amazing, amazing young man. I, I'm really looking forward uh, to hearing him play and tell his story to uh, the folks that will be attending the gala. This sounds like an exciting evening. Tell me when it starts. When does this start? Uh, it starts at 5.30 p.m. on Friday, May 13th. Our silent auction viewing will be from 5.30 to 7.00. Then our dinner will be from 7 to 8, and then the program begins at 8, 8 p.m. And last year you raised almost $85,000. Yes, we did. And yeah. we're going for what this we're year? We're going for 100000 Six figures. Six <laughs> figures. <laughs> we're hoping. And, uh, you know, so far, so good. You know, we've got several reservations there, but we still have... Mm -hmm. Still have uh, room at tables if anybody is interested in coming. Yeah. And, and these monies go to programs that are underfunded, so they're okay. very important monies. and. Uh, particularly, I talked about you know the challenges with the budget impasse, mm -hmm. but in this case, all of that money will go to help programs that have, that provide important niches, but the state doesn't fund. Yeah, and so it's very important it to us important to, to raise sustain this money. Us. Yes, yes, it is. Absolutely. And of course, once again, it's Friday, May thirteenth. It's at the Fireside Tavern in Strasburg. Now, after this event, at the end of the year. You do something really cool, and it's gift wrapping, and you do it out at Park City in the Sears Mall, and it's right up through what Christmas Eve, yeah, Black Friday. Yeah, we the day after Thanksgiving, yep. and we go through Christmas Eve, and uh, it, this is our 45th year there. We started the year Park City opened. We had a card table out there, but we have a really beautiful kiosk booth now that our volunteers have helped us with, and. Each year we have over 500 volunteers mm -hmm. that come out and man the gift wrap booth and wrap beautiful, beautiful packages. And how much did you raise last year? We raised almost $43,000 last year. that's fantastic. It is. So I think we need to mark down this May 13th, Friday, yes. to do this, and then mark 
on your calendar when you do your shopping where you're going to go to get everything yeah. wrapped. Rack City Mall, exactly, yes. Makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, We're absolutely. going to put the website up on the screen again where you can find out everything about uh, UDS, the services that are provided, and how you can be a part of this. Boy, this event on Friday, May 13th, is just going to be phenomenal at this new location. So you're going to be able to have even more people, right, Bill? Yes. Uh, we loved being at the Lancaster Country Club, but we've outgrown it, so that's a great problem to have. So we had to go to a larger venue. Yeah. And we're excited to be at the fireside. Uh, there have been lots of renovations and improvements out there, and so we think it's going to be a great place for a great gala. And how many people do you think we can get in there? Well, we what can get we up say? to 300 there. That's okay. what we're hoping, and uh, we're hoping we sell out. That's our goal. <laughs> That's That's the you know, we have some really interesting items that we're going to be auctioning off this year, including this really cool poster from the new Star Wars movies Ooh. signed by all 13 cast members plus New George, Lucid, <laughs> George Lucas, wow. J.J. Abrams, and John Williams, the composer. Wow. Um, we have a beautiful, beautiful necklace from Brentel Miller Jewelers that's going to be auctioned off as well and some really My really personal cool favorite is sports and so uh, we actually have a poster signed by the entire dream team uh, from the Olympics, the oh, best wow. team that we ever had with Magic and yeah. Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. And so that's yeah. a very special item. Well, this sounds so exciting. We're going to take a brief pause. When we come back, we've got some final thoughts. Stay with us. We've been talking about UDS, United Disability Services, also the big gala coming up on Friday, May 13th. Larry, give us a final thought. Yeah, finally, I'd just like to leave your viewers with this thought. Um, you never know when you might be struck with a disability, you or someone in your family. UDS has incredible, incredible people that, that come into your home and help support you to remain independent in the community. I hope you'll all consider coming to the gala on May 13th. It's going to be so much fun. Can't wait. Yes, yes, Bill. Well, what makes that gala special is it's the success stories. It's seeing what people can accomplish if, you know, given the opportunities. Mm. People have been dealt a tough hand, but they rise above it. And with our support and the support of the community, because that's who we celebrate as well, mm -hmm. it's amazing what they can accomplish. And that's really what we're celebrating the amazing talents and skills of the people we serve. Yeah, and we're going to put the website up on the screen. You can find out how you can be a part of this gala, how you can help in other times, and also Christmas time, get gift wrapped That's in right. the Sears Mall out at uh, Park City Black Friday up until Christmas Eve. Thank you so much for all that you do in our community. What a difference it makes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diane. And thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.